Well, if you are someone who regularly watches our videos, first of all, a huge thank you. Your support means so much to us. And second of all, just a very quick message. Now you're probably already aware that over the years we've had some unbelievable support from the brands of Fox, Matrix and Rage. And their support really has helped us in producing bigger and better videos for everybody to watch that are completely free. So that isn't changing, but in addition to that this year, we're gonna be doing some work with Corum. Now Corum, for me personally, have produced some of the best specialist tackle for years now. So when the chance came up to produce a specialist range of video under the Corum banner, of course we jumped at the chance as well. So this is gonna be the first video in that style, the specimen style videos. Many more to come, keep your eyes out for those. Obviously, please hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and drop us a comment of what you think of the video. For me, tench fishing and spring are words that go hand in hand. And every year I like to make the most of this special season. And one lake that particularly captures my attention is on the Billingford complex. It's incredibly deep, clear, weedy water that can prove challenging, but can also offer the great rewards. And that is why every year I like to turn my attention to spring tension. Well, that's it. All three rods are on the spot. Anticipation is extremely high. As I mentioned, this is my favorite style of fishing when it comes to this time of year. So we'll let these fish away for an hour, see what happens. But first things first, let's get that kettle on. So just a quick refresh of the feed. It's important to keep on top of this style of fishing. It's quite active. Keep fresh bait going in. I probably, I don't know, we've probably been fishing an hour and a half, something like that, and I'll keep refreshing and even through the night with that sort of time frame as well. But what I have noticed is since we've been here, so we started off with the free rods on the far side. We know it's a pretty good spot, but there's been an awful lot of activity just in the middle here. Now, I think it's probably about 16, 18 foot. So yes, it's deep, but it'd be silly to ignore the amount of tench we've seen topping. So these two rods are gonna get refreshed onto the far side. I'm gonna equip a new one onto this spot slightly closer in, and then we can gauge which one's better and perhaps move all rods or two rods onto the better spot. So let's get that done, and hopefully we can find out where these tench are. So those are free and freshened up. The other one's on the new spot and I'm just gonna pop out probably six or seven spawns on that area just to try and kickstart something off. Obviously over the far side we threw it to be nice and stealthy, but it's so deep there it's not gonna make a difference. So a little bit of bait, introducing the swim, and hopefully a new spot rocking. Well, if anything is going to bring on a fish. Ooh, look at that. Pizza time. That is what we're talking about. Mm. We should really apologise for people who watch our channel regularly for the amount of takeaways we have doing night sessions. Not good for the waistline, but it does give you time concentrate on the fishing and we're coming up to probably the best time when it comes to tench fishing so as it draws into the evening into darkness and obviously early hours is really good as well so I'm going to concentrate on tucking into this refresh those rods and as it gets into bite time hopefully we can finally show you a tench
we talked that one up, didn't we? The pizza never fails. And a slight refresh of the rods and one has absolutely ripped off. It feels like still there, but may have me in a ball of weed. There is plenty of weed in between me, oh, it's coming now, and the spot I'm fishing. So trying to keep steady pressure on it, but it's a good sign. Whew, if your heart doesn't go in situations like that, you probably shouldn't be fishing. This is the one where you really start to feel it. And every sort of head shake goes right down your arm and makes the heart go a little bit faster. Loads of adrenaline, but he is coming much freer now. So it's always good to get the first bite. I always say the first bite is the most important one because you know your spot's working, your rigs are working, and then you've got something to work on. So what we'll do is we'll get this one in. We'll have a look at what we caught it on because I've gone for two different tactics and there is a reason behind that, which I'll talk you through in a moment. But for now, I need to concentrate on getting this one in the net. There he is. Not the biggest tench, but it's a start. Get in there. Go. Nicely in the side there. That wasn't coming off, which is pretty lucky in that weed. Let's just get rid of this rod. There we go. Bent up in anger, a male tench for our first fish. That is a wicked start. Look at him with his fin up. And I've got no qualms in saying tench are definitely my favourite fish. I just think they're so cool wicked little fish to catch and where we fish not that many places where you can get amongst many big tents so when you do start catching a few it's quite nice now hopefully we may be able to show you ones a little bit bigger than this throughout the session but that for a start is good enough for me so i'm going to get this one slipped back and we will show you the rigs we're using and what i'm going to change to next on the other rod go on buddy Right, so just before I get this back out there, as promised, we're going to have a little look at the rig because we did go for two options. So this is the one that we first got the bite on just then and it's really simple and my absolute go-to tench rig. So it's a helicopter rig. This is a little Corum heli rig on here, a three inch fluorocarbon hook link and a size 12 hook. So nothing complicated about that and that sits about six inches above a little grub feeder. These are incredibly easy to use. They're basically little method feeders, but in maggot style form, maggots in there, close it up and you're there to go. Absolutely tangle free. And what I've always thought is one of the best tens rigs out there. Now in saying that, I'm gonna contradict myself here because the other two rods are on conventional method feeders, Dura method feeders. And that's because recently a lot of carp boys here have been catching a fair few amount of tench. So pellets, boilies and stuff like that has been doing really well. So I thought a little conventional method feeder with a micro boilie on it might be a good way to go. But I've eaten humble pie. I should have put them probably all on my go-to favourite rig. So I'm going to get this one baited and fired back out there. And I'm going to swap at least one of the other rods over to this. So I've got two fish in on my absolute number one way. And just in case they really are switched on to boilie, which they definitely can be when there's a lot of carp boys fishing the tench and anything really can really switch over to like the fish merely carp baits. Just in case that's the race, we'll keep the other one on a method feeder. But let's get this one out there, get the other one changed over and hopefully be able to show you another tench very shortly.
And there we go, that is both those rods back on that far spot on the little maggot method feeders, a favourite style little helicopter rig. What a beautiful evening it is. It was forecast rain, so I'm praying that it doesn't happen because at the moment it is lovely. So I am going to sit back, watch this evening unfold, and hopefully be back shortly with another tench. Well, that is a good sign. Same rod again over on that far side. And we are attached to another fish. To be honest with you, I was a little bit worried because there's a couple of tufties diving and I'm always dubious, do they put fish off? But in the odd situation, you know, I've had takes when they are diving on you. And it's a funny sort of bite, rattled a little bit. Thought, oh no, we've not, hooked the, we've not hooked the duck. No one likes that. But as soon as I've connected into it, there's no way. It's a head shake and tench. I can feel it staying really deep oh sorry that was my gopro beaming away i thought we were in <laughs> thought we were in again staying really deep but it, like i said there's a fair bit of weed between me and where we're fishing I, I do like this pit for that you know you do have to find the clear spots you do have to fish accurately but that's half the fun isn't it so it's coming in now not too far away gonna have another one to show you Yay. Right in between the other rods, but it's in. Well, it's not going to break any records, but I am going to weigh it. So there we go, scale's zeroed, just to get an idea of roughly how big it is, because I haven't been tench fishing this year yet, and you sort of lose track of what a tench looks like and what size they are. So let's get this one weighed have a proper look. Right, there we go. It's not going to break any records like I said, but just over sort of six, six five pretty much. That'll do, won't it? Well, there we go. That is a wicked tench. Female this time, so one of each. Six pound five ounces. Probably wouldn't normally weigh them of that size but when you haven't caught them for a while just to get your eye and you can pretty much judge it I think from then on unless it looks really big and obviously you really want to know but yeah same rod same spot both rods over that far side and on the same tactics now so hopefully we've got something going we are definitely losing the light it's quite hard sometimes to judge on camera what the light levels are but it's definitely drawing in and that has clearly made a difference on the bite times and, and actually how aggressive they're going to feed so I think it's time we slip this one back, get another bait out there, and hopefully we can have another one. And away she goes. Completely lost light now. The rods are out there, so you can't quite see them. But notoriously, this lake switches off at night, so it's time for me to get the shoes off and retire. And it's now started to rain with a bit of thunder and lightning, so it's always nice. But obviously, if anything happens throughout night, we'll keep you informed. If not, we'll see you in the morning. Well, this is a an interesting one. It's uh, just me and my GoPro. It's raining. Cameraman is tucked away <laughs> in his bivvy. And that was an absolute screaming take. So, 
I'm acting now as cameraman and presenter. I would say this has got to be, it's got to be a row carp, it's got to be. Oh, here we go, here we go. Hopefully some sign of natural. And that certainly isn't a tench. <laughs> Look at that, hopefully you can see it on the GoPro. But what I'll do, the rain has just about stopped as I got here. Let's see if I can wake the cameraman up. Well, here is the culprit of that beasting of a fight. I had to wake Chris up to show you this angry little common car. But he's probably, I don't know, mid-double maybe. And at one point, I really did think I was connected to a big, big tench because there really isn't many carp in here, literally a handful of them. So it's quite rare to see. And I thought, you know what, it's worth showing you a nighttime shot, even if it isn't the intended species. It got the heart rate going, it's a fish. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters really, isn't it? So pretty good fun. And I am quite happy with that. The first carp I've ever caught out of this lake. So. There we go, not the intended species we said, but good fun all the same. We'll get it slipped back, get the rod back out there and hopefully get ready for that morning tench fishing action. It's a bit shallow in this margin for him. Yes, that's a fish. Could be a first light tench. Well, I'm glad Chris heard me. I was then talking to the GoPro about what a wicked time first light is for tench fishing. I've seen a couple of fish roll. And now we have got one that we can show you. Which is weird here, you just really don't get wee, many bites throughout the night. But this one is nearly ready and a perfect start to the morning. Well, he is a baby one, the smallest one of the session so far, but more than welcome. And I don't know why, I said it before, this lake really does just switch off at night, obviously, apart from that carp, which is pretty good fun. But the tents just don't really feed. And as soon as this light breaks through, they tend to have a little bit of a feed again. I actually only had two rods fishing. I didn't put the rod back out after the carp because it was raining all night, and I'm really glad that it's stopped now. So we might be able to get the rods back onto the spot, get some bit more bait out there, put that kettle on, and hopefully have a little bit of a morning flurry. Hey, that way. Could be a fish on that. There is a fish on that. 
<laughs> that is crazy. I know I said that they feed in the morning, but Chris was literally filming me put this last rod on the rest and the bobbins dropped to the floor. I, I think I said, I think there's one on there and have picked it up and there is a fish on there. And that is, you know, that's the pinnacle of tench fishing. They really do come on the feed in these early hours. You I mean, if you were gonna do sessions, I would advise doing exactly what I've done, you know, turn up early afternoon, late evening, fish the night, get this morning feed, and then probably, you know, that's the best bit of the fishing done until sort of perhaps nine, 10 o'clock, still good fishing time available. So a few hours for that yet, but yeah, that was a quick bite, wasn't it? Well, another little tent. We've not been too lucky with the size of the fish at the minute, but what I'm gonna do with this one to save too much stress is quick unhook. There you go, a quick show to you. And we will send her on our way, none the worse or wiser. And another one. A little bit bigger. Well, what a hectic couple of minutes. A few fish in quick succession. Really good to see the spots go. And I've tied up a couple of fresh rigs because I need to refresh all rods and get them back on the spot. While we're talking about the spots, we've had one on the Mephibita rod, but really the winner today has been the one over the far margin fishing up against that reed line. It's about six or seven foot and it slides off nicely down a slope. And then just at the bottom of the slope, perhaps down to eight foot, it flattens off into a bit of a silty gully. And that is where I've put these feeders. We've known about the spot before, it's always pretty productive and it's certainly been good for us today. So if you can find areas like that in your tench fishing, it's certainly a good place to ambush them. But for now, I'm gonna get these rigs freshed up, three more on the spot. This sun is now burning through the clouds. So potentially time for one more fish. Fingers are crossed. Let's get those rods out there. Well, it wasn't looking very good, I'm gonna be honest with you. The sun came up and I was sort of stand there to Chris and go, I think the time has gone. And the middle rod, the one that's done most of the bites, to be fair, has just ripped off. And it looks like there's a chance we can end on a fish. Like I said, bite time definitely drawing to an end. As that sun breaks through the cloud, it just, didn't feel right, they're not showing, they're not 
getting liners like we were early this morning but we are attached to one last tench to finish up. Could be the smallest one to finish on. Just slip that hook out and we are going to end on the smallest tench of the session a little angry female got a few battle scars probably when she was younger maybe attacked by a cormorant or a pike something like that so i'm sure she's got some stories to tell we haven't managed to get in contact with any of the bigger tench today but at times the action has been hectic and obviously it's enjoyable spring tench fishing for me as i said at the start has got to be my favorite i just love getting out getting bites and getting amongst a few tench. But that is gonna be it for us. We're gonna get this one slip back and head off home. As always, a huge thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and we will see you again on the next one.